there are two types of strategies for asset protection planning. Ooh, I'm rolling up my sleeves for this. Big reveal. Hey friends, the word best is a funny thing. I love it when I hear attorneys say, we're the best at this. It's like, really? Yeah. How do you know? Do you know all the other lawyers out there? <laughs> and what does that even mean? That's right. not like a quantitative thing that you can measure. Exactly. Was that a thing that you had in your engineering courses, Shreya? Oh yeah, quantitative well, measurements. I mean, was there a best measurement? Oh, there was never a best measurement. Mm. You could optimize things, but it was constantly a work in progress. Yeah, because best is a subjective thing, a subjective measurement. Mm -hmm. It's an opinion, right? What might be, what I might think is best for me might not be the best for somebody else. The same applies for the best asset protection strategies. What is the best? What's good for one person might not be the best for another. If you're hoping, I'm gonna tell you the one thing you need to do that's gonna be the best for you, you should probably start, stop watching. We're not going there. That's okay. I am okay with uncertainty, Colin. Yeah, so there's not gonna be a, a do this recommendation. What I wanna do is have a higher level discussion about asset protection planning in general so that you can have a better idea of what's going on, what happens with these strategies so that you could figure out what the best asset protection strategy is for you. So quick story time here. I love stories. Shrey and I mm. were in business together. And we started another business outside of the law with um, her father, my father-in-law. We started this business and it was going to be a smashing success. <laughs> yeah, we're still working on it. Still working on it. But we had some very, very valuable assets in this business. Yeah, in the form of patents. Yeah, and... And software. Yeah, and everyone was super gung-ho. Yeah. And I was sitting there worried. Sweating. He was just sitting in the corner sweating. Yeah, about what might go wrong. Yeah. Um, you know, who, what if we get sued? What if this deal goes bad? What if we're moving so fast? We hire all these people, we make some mistakes. We do the wrong contracts. A million things going through my head that sure. I was worried about. Because I wanted everything to be the best for us. But I was worried that something would go wrong. I was looking into asset protection. And I do have to say, my dad is of the mentality of plan for the best, prepare for the best. And I wanted to plan for the worst. So when I was looking around at the best asset protection strategies, typically you're gonna see offshore trusts. People are like, oh, you need an offshore trust. And at the time, while we had some valuable assets, they weren't valuable in the sense of- uh, Cash money. Cash money. So yeah. I couldn't afford to do this higher level of asset protection planning. So what did we do instead, Shreya? Nothing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We did nothing instead. The, the reply you get from these attorneys that do this is come back later when you've made your millions. Come back when you got $30 million in the bank. Yeah, and then it's you know no problem to drop that cash mm -hmm. to get set up for the highest level of protection you could get. So we did nothing, but it started me on a journey of learning. I got obsessed you with did. asset protection. Okay. Started reading all the books, Read all the blogs, read all the books, went to the conferences, started reaching out to people in the industry, moved to New Zealand for five weeks. Okay, yeah, that's a great summary. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, it involved as much learning as I could. It involved traveling across the globe to mm -hmm. build a network and get a better understanding of how things worked. What I'm getting to with this story is eventually, I started offering asset protection services to people. Yes. But I started at the lower end, right? I didn't mm -hmm. want to offer something that I didn't feel as competent in. So in all of this learning, I started noticing that there was no consensus on what asset protection actually is, like what qualifies for it. Uh, humble living insurance, mm -hmm. LLC planning, asset protection trusts, um, equity liens, life insurance, 401k, solo 401k, self-directed yeah. IRA. There were endless possibilities of what you could be doing for asset protection. So eventually I started to meet some of the authors, the people that I was learning from, you know, the people at, up, up at the top of the industry. And I would meet some of them and be like, hey, what do you do, young man? 
<laughs> I'm sure they were more excited than that. Well, they, they probably had like, you know, a little Mai Tai in hand. What do you do, young man? <laughs> well, nobody called me young man, but I would respond, answer protection. Yeah, I'm doing answer protection. Because from what I've been learning, I was doing answer protection. I was helping people avoid stupid lawsuits. Right. Putting up barriers to prevent these Creating disaster Creating entities. Things. Yeah. And so I'd tell them asset protection planning, and their response would be, what kind? You know, what exactly are you doing? And I'd say something like, oh, we do a lot of these, um, you know, LLCs for holding real estate investment, rental properties. And the response would be like, oh, you mean business planning? Mm, oh, burn. Yeah, or maybe it was, mm, oh, estate planning. <laughs> So I was never doing asset protection to them. According to them. Yeah, and I was just so confused because, you know, there's this one guy who's considered like the founder of asset protection, like this whole niche, and he has this huge book with all these different strategies and all these people worked for him and yeah. worked with him. And this guy considered anything asset all protection All of these planning. things that you were offering yeah. asset protection planning. Yes. It's all in the book, Shreya. So Shreya, it wasn't until I started helping my clients set up asset protection trusts mm -hmm. that I think I was truly in the club. But why? Why asset protection trusts? Why are they so special? Yeah, so to them, asset protection was when you were setting up these asset protection trusts, maybe an offshore foundation, that type of thing. So after all of these years, I think I have figured out what the differences are, why they don't consider some things asset protection planning, and other things are. Got it. And I'm about to lay it down for you. Lay it down. Shreya there are two types of strategies for asset protection planning. Ooh, I'm rolling up my sleeves for this. Big reveal. On one hand, there are things you can do to, I feel your eyes, to discourage lawsuits to discourage them from ever happening in the first place, discouraging them from continuing. So maybe you settle one right away with your insurance policy. And then on the other hand, there are things that you can do to survive a judgment against you. Discourage, survive. survive. You can do just discourage, and you can also add on surviving that judgment. I love it. So for those attorneys who said I wasn't doing asset protection planning, for them, doing planning that allows you to survive that judgment, that is asset protection planning. Everything else below that are things to do to- Entity planning. To discourage mm -hmm. lawsuits. Some might call it basic asset protection planning. To others, it's just business planning, insurance planning. Estate planning. Yes. Mm -hmm. So there are infinite number of things you could do to discourage lawsuits. I was gonna grab the book again. I mean, this is all things to do to discourage lawsuits. It reminds me of Forrest Gump, you know, when they run through all the shrimp, yeah. shrimp recipes. Yeah, coconut shrimp, lemon pepper shrimp. Shrimp gumbo. Self-settled trust, 401k, charging order, umbrella insurance, family limited partnership, series LLC, offshore trust, IRA, homestead exemption, equity strip, estate plan, prenup. There's all these things that you could do to discourage lawsuits, but if you get a judgment against you and all you've done is a strategy to discourage the lawsuits, you're not gonna be in the best position to protect yourself. To survive the lawsuit. To survive the lawsuit. Mm -hmm. So there are just a few strategies, a couple strategies really, that allow you to both discourage the lawsuits and mm -hmm. survive a judgment against you. Mainly, we're looking at offshore trusts, mm -hmm. I mean offshore foundation. The reason being is that at that point, you are no longer owning your assets in your personal name. Directly. They are owned in an entity, a trust, that you may control directly or indirectly. Mm -hmm. So you have this control and you still benefit from the assets, but they're no longer owned in your personal name. Compare that to owning your assets in an LLC. 
you still own the LLC directly. It's your personal property. Yeah. And whatever That's is the law. And whatever is your personal property is property that you could lose to a creditor. This is what lets you survive that judgment is because you no longer own the assets directly, so you are unable to hand them over to a creditor. If your strategy is to just discourage lawsuits, you still own things directly. You act alone, and therefore, if you have a judgment against you, you have the power to hand the assets over, and a judge can tell you to do that. So when you are thinking of the best asset protection strategies for you, the things to consider are whether you want to simply discourage the lawsuits, insurance, humble living, LLC planning, things of that nature. Or if you want to be able to survive a judgment against you, not just discourage the lawsuits, then you need to get to that level where you are no longer owning things personally in your own name. Surviving a judgment against you can't be done alone. At that point, you have to have somebody on your team to help you. Mm -hmm. The best asset protection strategy for you will depend on your decision on whether you want to discourage potential lawsuits or if you want to have the ability to also survive a potential judgment rendered against you. The choice is yours. Thanks for watching though. If you liked this video, please hit that like button and consider subscribing. And I'll see you next time.